welcome to today's Gale Force Twins episode. We just got Sirius XM weather and fish mapping installed on our new Simrads, and I am so excited to use this technology to hopefully, ideally, catch more fish. Yes, so today we are going to be going offshore and we are going to be looking for fish using Sirius XM to help us understand the wind, the current, the conditions. Also maybe use the fish mapping and see where the plankton are and what is going on offshore using our new Sirius XM fish mapping and weather. My name's Amanda. My name is Emily and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. is brought to you by Sirius XM Marine. Now that we're offshore, I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to overlay serious weather on my chart and I'm going to look at what is going on with the weather today. Now this is something you can do once you're offshore or you can do it at the dock, but we wanted to really get out here today. It's calm, it's not too rough and we had the ability to do it once we're out here. I am able to view things like precipitation and sea surface temp. So precipitation, what that is, is that's rain. So basically I, I can turn my precipitation on, I can zoom out and I can see if we have any rain today. We have a little bit of rain going on, but not a lot. So thankfully in my head, that's not really something I'm gonna worry about right now. Something I do wanna pay attention to is sea surface temp. So you can look at it colored or with a text. Colored is just gonna be kind of like a color code and text is gonna be with the actual number of the sea surface temp. So sea surface temp can be really useful in helping us find the Gulf Stream. So I can look and say, oh, there's a temperature change right here around a thousand feet of water and it, it travels along the whole coast of Florida. That must be the Gulf Stream. So if I know I wanna fish the Gulf Stream, I can go ahead, look at my chart, get an idea of the temperature change and what's going on. Now, maybe it's not the Gulf Stream we're looking at. Maybe we wanna look for something else and we just see a temperature change. We all know that when it's really hot in the dead of summer, maybe a colder temperature is better to fish. And in the winter, maybe it's absolutely freezing and there's a warm spot. But having a temperature change can give us information and it might be something we wanna check out. Now, I think our most used feature is probably going to be looking at the waves, the wave height, the wave direction, and the wind and what direction the wind is coming from. So if we look at our screen right now, we are looking at the waves and these arrows are basically showing us the direction the waves are traveling. So we have the waves coming from the northeast traveling towards the southwest. And so we can look at that information and it's telling us that they're 13 seconds apart. So I know today it's pretty much gonna be calm, but it's gonna be very swelly. We have big swells every 13 seconds or so. And being out here right now, I would say that's very accurate. What we can also do with these waves though, is we can look ahead three or six hours and see what it's gonna look like this evening, later today, to see if there's gonna be any big changes. And that's gonna tell us if we need to worry about how long we can stay out for. And what I really love about this though, is it's great if you're doing a long range trip, like Pulley Ridge or the Tortugas, where you're maybe outside of cell service, so you can't check your apps and your phone for weather and wind and conditions, but you can check your Sirius XM Marine. You can check that out and you can know, can I stay an extra day? What's going on offshore, especially if you're outside of cell range, which is what I love about this. So if we're way offshore and it looks like we have some weather coming through, we can be outside of cell range and we can be checking predicted weather up to two days out. Same for the wind. So we can look at the wind right now. And we actually, the wind is kind of all over the place, but for the most part, it's traveling. We have a Southwest wind at around five to 10 knots with this information. But if you look further offshore, it's kind of more of straight to south, even southeast wind. So the wind's a little swirly today, which feels actually very accurate. And once again, we can look at this be way outside of cell range and look at the predicted weather for the next day or so. So if we're out in Pulley Ridge, which this would have been very helpful on our Tortugas trip because we couldn't predict the weather and we just had to know this is the day we're going home. Having this can help us with our long range trips too. For our fish mapping, we have fish recommendations. And we can look and get an idea on where the billfish might be, the kingfish might be, the mahi, the swordfish, the tuna, and we can get down to the species. And fish recommendations, that is not based off of catch reports, that is based off of oceanographic conditions, things like plankton, chlorophyll, sea surface temperature, and sea height. The fish recommendations come out every Tuesday and Friday, so you can look at this information and we can 
know that based on the fish recommendations that this is based on what is going on offshore and it gives us information on where we might want to try to target our certain species. One more feature that I think we're going to want to use a lot is sea surface front and plankton fronts. So what that's going to do is that going to, is going to show us where there's a, a connection between a sea surface change and a plankton change and that's putting the two together and we learned from the guys at Sirius XM that they like to call it Christmas where the red and green lines touch. So it's based on a rating from one to four, four being the strongest. So if we have a four for sea surface temp fronts and a four for plankton fronts and those two are coming together, that might be a hot spot for fishing. So I'm looking at my chart right now and it looks like we do have a red and green line crossing each other. Now the red is a one, but the green is a three. So I think that might be something that we do want to check out today. We have a big change in sea surface temp and a big plankton front happening side by side, meaning it could be Christmas morning over there. For today, the first thing I am looking at is fish recommendations. And I am actually seeing we have a whole fish recommendation for kingfish between 60 and 300 feet of water, only about eight miles north of us. So I think that Emily, that this is something we should definitely go check out. We have our planers today. Not only is this recommending kingfish, but we do know that kingfish are in season. This is the time of year for them to be biting. So we know they're around. We've been catching kingfish. So I definitely want to go and head out to this area first. We are officially in our fish recommendations kingfish zone in around 100 and 200 feet of water. I'm going to go ahead and put the planers out. And what I did notice in that fish mapping zone that I really liked is there's actually a plankton front rated at a three. So what I want to do is I'm going to get these lines out and then we're going to start heading towards that plankton front rated at a three inside of that fish recommendation zone. We just had a bite. Unfortunately, the fish came off. Clearly we had a bite. Unfortunately, the fish just missed it. And sometimes that happens. Just like we anticipated, Amanda, we turned around past that spot and we are not hooked up. All right, Emily, pull that planer. There's definitely a fish back there. I think that might be a kingfish, Amanda. Emily, that would be targeted species acquired. Targeted species acquired. Oh, oh, there it is. It's trying to fight you, but Emily's doing it. And it's a cuda. <laughs> <laughs> we got a barracuda. There is our barracuda caught inside the fish recommendation zone. There he is. All right, might not be a kingfish, but it is a barracuda and we have had action in the fish recommendation zone. So I would say so far so good. All right, now we have our barracuda. Now we could keep this guy for bait, but we are just gonna let him go. But what I do like is that we're having action in the zone. And one of the rules for us is you never leave fish to find fish. And we know we're having bites, we know we're having action. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this guy overboard. Head first. There he goes. All right, so Emily, I think we need to keep spinning, spin around and just try that again. We have a fish on and the storm is right behind us. Yeah, but right thankfully we were able to get away from it. I think we'll be okay. So I'm gonna switch my screen from fish mapping to serious weather. And when I'm looking at the weather, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my precipitation. So you can see if you're looking at my screen right now, the green is just rain. The yellow blocks is heavier rain and the red is even heavier rain. And then you can specifically see the lightning bolts. So we have most of our lightning bolts are happening inland, on land. There's a couple over towards over out east and there's only one lightning bolt offshore near that green block area. So I know there really isn't any lightning in this storm that I need to worry about at the moment, but I do need to be aware that this storm does have lightning in it. It does have some yellow and red, but most of that is happening on land and what's happening offshore is just some light rain. I'm just gonna switch back to my fish mapping and I'm gonna keep fishing in this area. I'm just gonna be aware in the back of my head that there is a storm that does have lightning in it, but most of the lightning is happening on land and I'm just gonna pay attention to what's going on around me. I think Let's we're real this fish in. Amanda, we were going pretty fast when this fish bit. So I'm definitely not thinking barracuda. Typically when you catch cudas, a good rule of thumb is you were probably going too slow 
and we adjusted from there. We said, yeah, we don't want to keep catching barracudas, but we are going to stay in the area because we also have an expression, don't leave fish to find fish. If there's I fish around, I said Amanda already said that. that. This is 2.0 from Emily. If there's fish around, whether it's kudas or not, there, there are going to be most likely other species as well. So maybe this is a king, a big king. Maybe it's the elusive wahoo. But we don't say the W word until we see it. Probably you just Too ruined late. it for us. You ruined it. <laughs> Be very careful not to drop this line. Amanda, you might have to get that gaff out. We'll have to see how good it's hooked. I don't know if we can swing it or not. Well, that is something else. We just caught a barracuda going seven knots, which is pretty fast for a barracuda. Typically, we'll catch those at five knots. All right, Emily, let's just swing this guy in the boat for a picture but it might be time to come up with a new plan. I would agree with that. In the boat. There is definitely life in the fish recommendation zone. However, Emily, I think it's time to change gears. We're definitely gonna switch things up after catching two kudas and having a bite. I definitely don't wanna keep catching kudas today. So we are gonna go ahead and take a chance. So we are gonna leave fish to find fish, but we are leaving fish to find fish and we, we're aware that it's a risk. Exactly. We're looking for more than action today. I'm thinking deep dropping, Amanda. I'm thinking we change things up and we do some deep dropping and we try to get some meat in the boat for dinner. Dinner. But let's keep this guy. Yeah, he's Kudos definitely, make good we're bait. gonna keep him. We can use him for bait. We can actually use him for deep drop bait as well. They're down there. They're just nibbling though, so I'm gonna give them a minute. Those, those are quite the nibbles. We're getting nibbles. And Amanda, you're feeding it, correct? Yep, I'm feeding so. it. Sometimes when they're hard to hook, I like to let them eat. So we let the line out, give them a chance Lock to it up the bait and go. Oh yeah, he's on there. Check it out, we have a fish on. And the thing about these vermilion snappers is they're in 300 feet of water and it's quite a ways for them to go to get to the surface. But what we do is we intentionally fish the drag loose. Now, not gonna lie, we could crank that drag up and just reel them up really fast. However, their mouths are kind of soft, and you don't wanna just rip the hooks out of their mouth. So you kind of want to essentially be fighting the fish a little bit, so that way he doesn't bounce off. So let's look in the water and see if we can see color anytime soon. Amanda, they're not even jacked. Oh wait, we got one, no, we oh, got two. Oh, we have two fish, two for the price of two one. Two for the price of one. We have eight vermilion snapper. All right, well, that's why that thing was bouncing so much. Let's yep, that makes a lot of All sense. Right, bring him in the boat. All right, let's be careful there. Oh no, our snapper swam off. Our he swam away. Away. Oh no. We have our Almaco Jack. So Emily, what makes an Almaco an Almaco Jack? Almaco Jacks are very similar to Amber Jacks, but the big key difference is actually going to be that top dorsal fin. See how it's more, I guess I would say skinny and pointed. That's, that would be an Almaco. An Amberjack will have more of a, a rounded, beefier dorsal fin. Exactly. So monkey. what happened was, so we like to fish really low drag for vermilions because their mouths are very soft. So the drag was great. We brought the fish up. But because there was a jack on there as well, unfortunately, we missed our opportunity. And our vermilion snapper swam down to the bottom and swam away. But we know there's vermilions here. So let's send this guy over. Ready? Head first release. Oh, not quite head and first, but there he goes. He's away strong. Next drop. Next drop, and we got them on right away. Once again, fishing really light drag. Their, their mouths are so this soft. Time, it's definitely not a jack. You can tell. Here come our vermilion snappers. There you guys can no. see it down there. We got oh, oh, it's oh, a no, vermilion and a jack yeah. again. Okay, Amanda, we got to get this vermilion this time. Ready? There goes, there goes the, the Almaco, and we got our vermilion in the boat. 
And these guys only have to be 12 inches to keep for perspective. So that's kind of how you can tell it's a decent sized fish right there. Let's see how large this vermilion is. We have almost 15 inches. So he is, is quite the keeper. Definitely. Vermilion snapper. Delicious snapper dinner. And look at these conditions. I mean, the weather came down, the storms are gone. It's like Lake Atlantic. This morning it was not Lake Atlantic and now it is Lake Atlantic. Doing another drop and this time I am hoping for more than one snapper. So we've already caught two fish, but now we're looking for at least two snappers. Oh, it's on there. They're on there. They're definitely on there. Looks the same as last time. It but looks like one, but it's okay. It does look like one. Here's the thing is it's a risk to put it. So you have a couple options. You could drop it back. I down. could drop it back, which we do that a lot for, for, for black belly rose fish, which is a great way to get a stringer of rosies. But rosies have really tough mouths. So once they're hooked, they're hooked. You can drop it down, you can pick it up, and you can try to catch five roses at one time. But since vermilions have such soft mouths, it's really tough to want to drop this thing back down and pull it back up and try to catch more than one at a time. So if I catch more than one time, it's really going to be in one drop and one up. I'm not going to drop it back and go back and pull it. I mean, you can, but it might be a little For windy. us, it's not worth it. Not worth it. We have another vermilion snapper. Now it's only one guy like we predicted. We said that it looks like one fish, but hey. We got him. Just gotta be careful when you've got all these hooks flying around. Yes, there are five hooks on this. There we go. Emily, Emily the box. we 100% now have, well, that one fish is dinner for two for us. Oh yeah. I mean, that was some pretty big fillets, but now we've got dinner for two. Or three. Or four. Emily, we have another fish on. We and do. And I think that if this is a vermilion snapper or a meat fish, I think this is our last fish of the day. If this is a meat fish, we have plenty we of have fish We have caught plenty of dinner. We have had plenty of action today. We've battled the weather and we came out on the other side. We did, it's actually really nice out. Came out really nice. The conditions look amazing. There's still some storms you can kind of see, but. We have some storms on land that we're gonna have to be mindful of as we head in. But hopefully this is a nice vermilion snapper. It's a vermilion. Amanda, we did it. It's a vermilion, it's a vermilion. snapper. Get him in the boot. All right. Nice. That is plenty of dinner. Let's see. There we go. There we have our dinner. Or really Tonight's dinner. dinner. We hope you guys had fun coming along with us as we use SiriusXM Marine fish mapping and weather to help us stay out here longer and catch more fish. And I am actually a really big fan. I loved being able to see the precipitation. We've had a really rainy month. So being able to see what's going on with the storms helped us know, hey, we can stay out. We just need to go around this storm. And we were able to see the lightning bolt. We'll see where's the lightning? What do we need to avoid? And all the little green precipitation was just some drizzling and it really helped us stay out and get to do some deep dropping and catch dinner. My favorite part was being able to check those live updates for the wave height and the wind. And I think that's gonna be super, super beneficial for when we make those long run trips, when we're 30 miles offshore and just completely out of cell range. And we can basically be much more safe, stay out longer, fish longer, catch more fish knowing that we have the technology that allows us to do that. So details will be in the description box if you guys are interested in getting yourselves Sirius XM marine fish mapping and weather. I'm a fan, highly recommended. In the meantime, we hope you get out there, have fun and stay safe. Take one, intro. This, <laughs> this camera. This video is brought to you by, I keep hearing that. Your, your final voice, your mic's oh, not gonna pick that up. Clap. Oh. What hands? Installed on our sim router machine. Wait, I was serious. I said weather and weather fish mapping. Weather and Got it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you need quiet on either end of it so I can fade to black without it. saying it. Duh. <gasps> okay. It should be in audio. Hello. This video is brought to you by Sirius XM Marine. Try that again. <laughs> oh, we're, we're getting bites. We're already bit. Emily, I, that was fast. Reeling them up. Brought to you by Sirius Marine. Say the Sirius XM Marine one more time. This video is brought to you Pause by. and then say it. Oh, hello, my name's Amanda. Hello. Someone's on. Someone's on. This video is brought to you by Sirius XM. This video is what Marine? Oh, oh, I want Marine. Right.